It is a good day if you're a Final Cut Pro editor because something that we've been asking for for a while are built-in tracking features and it was included in the newest update so now we can track titles, text, effects, images onto our footage without any third-party plugins needed. Hey guys my name is Dylan and let's dive into how to use this awesome new feature as well as go over some issues that might come up when you use it. Okay let's start with tracking something fairly simple and then I'll show you some more difficult tracking examples because sometimes the tracking isn't perfect but beggars can't be choosers i'm just happy we have it so let's track a title from m title cinematic from motion vfx onto her there's two ways we can go about doing this. The first method, and probably the way you should do it most of the time, is just by literally dragging your title effect generator or whatever you want to track directly onto the viewing window here. Now what's nice is that if you're tracking a person, Final Cut will identify their face for you and lock on. It will also try and lock on to objects. This isn't always perfect though, and I'll go over some examples that show it not working towards the end of the video. This one, however, does work. So we'll click Analyze here, and you'll notice that even though I started in the middle of the clip, it will quickly track to the end and then jump backwards to track the rest of the clip. So I don't have to manually go back to where we just started tracking and click the backwards analyze button. This is a really nice feature that it does it automatically for us. From here I can just extend the duration of the title and you'll see that it is tracked to our subject. You'll notice that the text is kind of rotating though, and I'll go over how to fix this in a second. Real quickly, let me show you the other way to go about tracking things. So you could also just drag the title over the footage, hit the transform button, and you'll notice we have some new shiny buttons here. If we hit tracker, now we can adjust our tracking grid to fit over what we want to track, and then just hit analyze. This is a more manual way to do it. Now here's how to fix this rotating text issue. Open your inspector window with the track title selected. Head to transform, and you'll notice by the hide and show button, we have this new tracking button for our transform points. Hit that, and we will turn off rotation here. Now our text won't rotate on us. If you wanna move your text on the screen, just use the on-screen controls to position it, or you can hit the transform button, hit transform, and then move it. Now doing this won't change your tracking data, so don't worry. You can move it anywhere without having to worry about retracking your subject. So that was a fairly simple track, so now let me run through some more difficult ones to show you some problems that may come up for you. So here we'll go through the same method, dragging what we want to track onto the viewing window here, and we'll have Final Cut just select her whole body to track since her face isn't showing up. We'll click Analyze. Now we'll need to turn off the rotation like we talked about. So inspector window, head to that tracker button we identified and we'll flip off rotation. Now while we're in here, we're gonna turn on scale. Since our shot is moving forward, which means she's appearing to get bigger in the frame, ideally we'd want our text to do the same, just to get a little bigger as the camera pushes in. So we'll turn on scale. Now here's the problem I've noticed when playing around with this. For whatever reason, sometimes the text or object or whatever you're tracking will distort when you turn on scale. Usually it'll just get smaller and you'll have to adjust the size again, but sometimes it'll stretch out in a weird way. So until I figure out a better way to handle this, what I've done is go back to transform and adjust the distortion with the transform tool. Then it looks a lot better. And if you happen to know a way to combat this, let me know in the comments. Let's try something a little different, but stay with with me because this is actually another method to track things. Say I want to track something on this shot as he comes off this ramp, but I don't know what yet. Since I don't know what I want just yet, I'll select the clip, go to the inspector window, head down to this new button here that says trackers, we'll click the plus icon and we are shown the tracking grid that we are familiar with now. I'll adjust the shape of it and hold shift to adjust the size of the whole thing equally and then hit analyze. So now this is tracked. Let's say I've decided I want to track this smiley face to his head as he jumps off the ramp. I'll go through a normal method. I'll drag it to the location on the screen, except this time I will hit this little drop down menu and instead of staying on the object track I'm on, I'll switch to this first one. Now you'll notice it's locked onto that track we made earlier. So we're all set with this tracking. I'll adjust the size and location of the smiley face by using the on-screen controls and the transform button if I need to. Now you might be saying, well Dylan, why didn't you turn on the scale like we did for the last shot since he's coming closer in the frame and getting bigger? 
And here's why. When I do turn on scale, the track is too difficult apparently and the smiley face distorts and stretches throughout the track. It ends up just looking better with it off in this specific shot. So just a word of warning that tracking won't always work so you may need to try out different methods to see what gives you the best result. And also keep in mind that the more detailed and high contrast area your tracking is, the better it's going to track. It also obviously helps not to have crazy camera movement. When the tracking is pretty difficult like in this shot, it may lead to some issues where the track doesn't seem to lock in. It may stutter or jump a bit. So what I would do is go back to that point and retrack. See if that takes care of it. You can also right click your clip, head to show tracking editor, and it gives you options to quickly analyze and delete sections just by dragging to select. Another way that you can possibly fix a jumpy, inconsistent track is by changing the tracking analysis method. Automatic will let Final Cut choose the best option, but there is a chance that the method it chose isn't the best for your shot. Apple mentions this in the user guide. If you're using the machine learning method and see jitter on the motion track, try switching to the point cloud method. Its bounding rectangles are much less susceptible to quick changes. So by switching to the point cloud, it seems we got rid of a little bit of the jitter in this clip. And like we've mentioned before, we'll click on our title, head to the inspector window, and turn off rotation here. Let's do one more example, but this time we're going to utilize tracking for color grading. This is really cool and something I'm excited about. And by the way, if you appreciate the video so far, hit the thumbs up button when you get the chance. It would mean a lot. So in this shot, I want to make her stand out a lot more. So we're going to drag a color correction in the effects window onto our viewing screen here and track. Now what I want to do is essentially brighten her up and darken her surroundings. This is something I do a lot in my color grading tutorials where I use shape masks to shape light a little more in post. So so here, if I was going to press shape and start to form my shape mask, it would also affect the tracking grid. As I change the size of the shape mask, it changes the tracking grid area. So I'll undo by pressing command Z and I will click this button here. This breaks the link between the tracking grid and the shape mask. So now I can form the mask how I want and the tracking points will stay the same. This is important. You'll need to select this when using masks like this. So I'll form the mask and add a bit of feather by adjusting this outside circle here. We'll head into the color board and you'll see down here the inside of the mask is selected. So I'm gonna raise my highlights a little, which will brighten her up a tad. We'll click on the outside and lower the midtones. I may actually lower the highlights a bit more and give the mask more feathering. I'll make a few more adjustments to the inside and outside of the mask. And now we created a nice little vignette to make her more of a focus in the frame and its track to her body. Something else that's cool about this tracking feature is that you can create multiple tracks in the scene and also rename them. So just double click to rename the track and type in what you want. This can help you to stay organized so you know which track is what. Let me know in the comments if you guys are happy about this new Final Cut Pro edition and if you're interested in learning a bunch of different ways to make edits in the software, check out this video here. I guarantee there's at least one useful tip or trick that'll help you out while editing. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.